Hey guys, and welcome back to the Girlfriends and Goals podcast YouTube channel. My name is Samaria, and this is my best friend and co-host, Miyosha. Tonight, we're going to be discussing Married at First Sight, season 14, episode 12, which was a pretty good one, in my opinion. Uh, but before we get started, guys, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free, and we would really like to reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers by the end of this season of Married at First Sight. We're over halfway there, so if you would just do us a favor and click that subscribe button, we would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with Michael and Jasmina because they didn't have too much going on. I was like, not them being the advisors at the beginning of the um, the episode. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But yeah, what really do you think was. That <laughs> yeah, so I guess we'll start with... Well, let's start with, I guess, the sit down where Katina came over to their apartment. I guess we can okay. start there. The first thing that I noticed is while Katina was talking, you know, she's getting teary eyed, very emotional. And Michael's very engaged, like, yeah, you know, he's all in, you know, showing her, I guess, some reassurance through his body language. Not that he's on her side, but like, oh, I feel where you're coming yeah. from. Versus Jasmina was just kind of like <laughs> flat faced a bit and like she seemed concerned. But even when Katina started crying about the situation, like I was expecting her to maybe lean in, say something. And I, I'm realizing that maybe that's just not Jasmina's style because she's yeah. kind of had like a similar situation in the past with Michael. So I said, okay, maybe this is just how she responds when people are sharing. Maybe she's intently listening mm -hmm. and maybe not jumping to console them. Um, so yeah, yeah, that scene just made me feel like, okay, maybe it wasn't just Michael. Maybe this is just how she handles, you know, being in situations where people are showing emotion. Uh, interesting I don't know that I would have expected her to um, run up and like like touch Katina I, I thought she showed enough concern but you know mm. those people where like the second somebody tries to cry they're like hovering over them I think she was <laughs> trying to avoid that <laughs> yeah um you know just let her like have her space but um I, I really just thought it was funny that they were the ones that she came to <laughs> for advice, but I, I mean, understand it too, because they all hang out, you know? Yeah, and who else would she go to? I mean, definitely not Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> so not her. Uh, I think yeah. for me, the biggest things that happened for them were, well, Jasmina doesn't know how to drive. Michael was very patient during the whole teaching her how to drive thing. Um, somebody on Twitter said, Michael, you don't have to worry about her um, knowing how to drive to run errands because y'all gonna get a divorce. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> but I think the biggest thing that happened was the talk with the mom and the talk with the sister. Mm. So I, we've said this before. We're fans of Michael's sister, Claire, because yes. I, feel, I feel like she gives really good advice not one-sided advice like she takes everybody's feelings into consideration like mm -hmm. she's like I think you should initiate it but you know don't go directly in because you have to respect her space like I I love her I think everybody needs a sister Claire especially Noi but we'll get to that yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that later um yeah and I I like that her mom was just asking her I think the right questions Mm -hmm. But Jasmina pretty much said, I don't really have feelings for him after a month. I think maybe they just need time. Well, I don't know. She also mentioned that there was no romance. So she said feelings and she said the word romance. Mm -hmm. And yes, they're connected. But I do think that Michael has done romantic things yeah. for her. But she's just, she's lacking, I guess, in the feelings department, even though he has Done. even the whole like driving school and teaching her how to drive yeah. like no it wasn't like cards and candles and things like that but it was very thoughtful in that he's like hey this is a good life skill to have that you'd have even beyond just you and I so I feel like he's putting forth the effort but I don't know that time is going to get them there I I don't know that it is either but I wish we had more time with them to see what I was surprised about was that he's been doing all the errands, like everything with like Feeny and stuff like that, that he's been mm -hmm. doing all of it. It 
it does seem like Michael has been giving a lot of effort this season. And uh, I, under, I understand that she probably does appreciate it, but it doesn't come off that way. And I don't know, you could do all the right things, but there's just not that connection. And that's the case with them. Like I said, very big, like homegirl, homeboy energy with those two. Yeah. And you mentioned Michael giving a lot. So he's been giving a lot, but also taking a lot of responsibility Mm -hmm. because in the scene where he cooked for her, I guess, for the first time, he, he took that moment to acknowledge, you know, his, his portion, I guess, of some of the time that was wasted earlier on in the relationship. And maybe she said it or took some accountability off camera, but she was just like, oh, I'm glad to hear you say that Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was just like you don't have anything else to say like me too are we we ever gonna hear where you may have messed up or your portion in this she just was like thank you for acknowledging your part but I feel like he's acknowledged his part before but a few times yeah Yeah. absolutely but I, I do really like them I think as individuals I think as friends I like them don't know if the romance will ever happen, but I, I I genuinely like them. And of course, I really like Michael because he's shown, you know, how worthy he is. But that's all I had on them. They didn't have too much. Oh, not him eating um, Feeney's cookie. That was it. That, I was like, <laughs> that's no, why you're not Michael. getting no kiss. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like Jasmina was when Pastor Kyle was visiting. Now, Michael, <laughs> why? <laughs> why would you do that? But yeah, I, I do Pastor have. I do have one question for you. Do you think that her only being in long distance relationships before this process Mm -hmm. is affecting how open she would be, I guess, to having a physical or romantic connection because the process is so accelerated? Now, granted, we don't know kind of the layout of her long distance relationships. We don't Mm -hmm. know if she met them in Boston and then they moved or if they've always been out of state from her. Yeah. But do you think that that's, because it's such a complete opposite of what she's used to, do you think that that could be impacting why her feelings are taking either longer or she's just not feeling it? Because that's a big jump going from, oh yeah, I've only dealt with people from out of state and she's already 29 or 30 years old uh, to I live with a man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It has that. Um, if you're feeling the person, you're feeling the person, you know? Okay. So I don't, I don't know that it is, but I, my tendency is to like think it doesn't <laughs> have anything, there. but it could, okay. it could. I think she's a nice person, but yeah, again, just not necessarily for Michael. Okay. Yeah. I don't know either. Yeah. We'll yeah. See. Um, all right. So you want to do. Mark and Lindsay next or Katina and Olajuwon? Either one. Okay. Let's do Katina and Olajuwon. Okay. Uh, Okay. (laughs) So when she comes to talk to Jasmina, one of the things that she says is like that Olajuwon said to her, it's not about your feelings. It's about what you did. If somebody ever said that to me after I've communicated to them that they've hurt me, I would probably not talk to that person ever again. And of course, it's, it's this predicament where they're married. So I know Katina feels like she has to keep trying and the show is set up that, you know, they want you to keep trying. But mm-hmm. I I can't because she's like trying to have this conversation with him and he's still stuck on what she did, which she didn't do anything. Mm-mm. I'm so annoyed with him. I am. And yeah, I don't want her to say yes anymore on decision day. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like he doesn't realize that his behavior and the way that he's handled it has completely really overshadowed whatever he's accusing her of doing. Yeah. Like his his behavior really is unacceptable. And it just shows that when, yes, he's emotional. Yes, he's, he tends to go off and then think about it later. Yeah. But I think the problem is that even once some time has settled, because it was once they got back home later on, I don't know if a day had passed, he still had this energy of, oh, well, I'll I'll talk to you about it when I feel like it, almost like a a punishment Mm -hmm. for what she did. Um, and, And it felt like it wasn't coming from what she actually did his own past. Like he's 
so afraid of what she might have been doing. Mm -hmm. It's almost like he's trying to get ahead of it, punish her. But deep down, he knows he still wants her, but he still wants to punish her. And that's the piece of it that I'm not feeling like as a husband, you shouldn't want to punish your wife, Mm -hmm. especially like over something like this, where you don't have proof. And all of these feelings or fear isn't coming from her. It's really coming from whatever, whatever you were doing in your past. Right. It's creeping back up on you because he's saying stuff like I deleted Instagram. I deleted this. Like nobody told you to do that. And just because you were moving crazy on Instagram and you were moving crazy (laughs) on the apps, that doesn't mean like he's projecting those things on her. And what I absolutely hate, because Michael came down to talk to him and Michael goes, well, do you want to talk about it? Which I think just for the record, Mike, Michael gave good advice, even to Katina. But Mm -hmm. what I wrote down was, Michael's advice is good for Katina if she were dealing with a reasonable person, someone who was trying Mm -hmm. to come to a resolution. But because he wasn't, it's like all of that, like you can only apply so much when the other side isn't willing, like the other party isn't willing. And so uh, when Michael came to talk to Olajuwon and he said, well, do you want to talk about it? Olajuwon's response was, I'm not gonna bring it up to her. And I think like in any relationship that is absolutely childish because if you're sitting there and you really want to talk about this thing, just go ahead and talk about it. Like go ahead and bring it up. But you trying to, I don't know, get into this like power position where this person is coming to you and now asking for the conversation. Like, I think that is absolutely ridiculous and it's an abuse of husband status to be quite frank um so yeah Yeah. I I didn't like that well it was it was that he didn't want to bring it up to her but then she said that she tried to apologize and he wasn't wanting to hear it either so what is she supposed to do I guess you're giving her the silent treatment until otherwise but yeah this process isn't really set up to where you have all the time in the world to be playing games and I don't know if Katina I feel like if she really wanted to cheat or do something I can't look I don't have any experience in this but it would be very sloppy of her like if she Mm -hmm. actually was doing something you have it on the first or second page of your phone you'd hide it a bit more than that and he's like she's a smart woman yes smart enough not to use the app while she's married so what is wrong with you and like for her I really felt for her because she said we've had all these conversations which we know they've been having like in the background these conversations but for her she was saying that they had an opportunity to put those things that they've discussed into action and it seems Mm -hmm. like every time he's failing her in that oh yeah in that thing so I I really felt for her because it's like man I'm giving she's giving a lot. Like, I don't know what he sees, but from what we see, she's definitely giving a lot. And he is very clearly insecure. And now like he's making Katina bear the brunt of his insecurity. Like, oh, I'm insecure. And now you have to do all of these things to fix it. You have to do all of these things to now make me feel secure. Um, And so I think that that is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, one thing that I wrote down is that I feel like Katina gives him so much grace. Yes. And in the situation with the cooking and all that, there were there was minimal grace. Mm-hmm. In this situation, minimal grace. Or it's it's not until time has passed and she's had to have several conversations with you off camera. Now you're giving her grace. And I just wrote down that him not being able to control his emotions, but then also lacking in grace for her is exhausting. And I feel like Katina deserves better than that, Mm -hmm. especially since you're saying like, okay, like, yeah, there's a learning curve, but when are you going to put what you've been studying and practicing actually into practice? Otherwise, this is going to get worn down. Like this can't be every situation where you want to get in your feelings and get emotional and the reason for y'all moving forward as a couple really is a result of her emotional maturity yeah and I love that she sat down with her friend it was her friend's name Anna or Anna it was it was with a it was with one (laughs) N but (laughs) um her friend like 
said that because Katina was saying, oh, I've learned that, you know, I have to be calm and communicating with him. And her friend responded, yeah, but he has to do the same for you. And I think mm -hmm. that's what we're missing is that he's not like the same level of grace, like you mentioned, he's not giving to her the same level of like calm, cool, collected, you know, like that she's mm -hmm. that same vibe. He's not returning it to her. Did you watch the after party by chance? I didn't, but I watched a recap though. Okay. So yeah. he was on this mm -hmm. week. And you know what's interesting? They showed him the clip of Jasmina and Michael um, in the conversation they had with Katina. And uh, his response was, oh, I wish I would have seen that. Like if she would have done that in front of me, that's enough of an apology. And it's like, this woman should not have to break down into tears. Like she should just be able to have a conversation with you as a logical adult and say, hey, this is not, I'll delete the app right now. It wasn't anything that I was hiding. Uh, it's on the front page of my phone. I haven't been logged in in a while. It's just there because I haven't deleted several apps. But for him to say, oh, I wish I would have seen that. It just made me think about the comment you made a few episodes ago where you were like, as soon as Katina said she doesn't cry, it seemed like he wanted to make her cry. Yep. And so I don't like that even after all the filming has taken place, that was his response to seeing her. It should have been nothing short of, I should have listened to her initially. I mm -hmm. need to calm down and I shouldn't have even let her get to that point. That's the only like response that I would have accepted from him. It's like he only believes, I guess, the depth of her commitment and love for him when she's at her breaking point exactly exactly and I don't think that it's just because she said that I don't cry I think it's because she had been guarded as well which I mean is natural so it's like oh if she's crying she must really be into this but that's toxic <laughs> like, yeah and he's it's because he's so emotional it's because he's like screaming you're married <laughs> and like <laughs> giving all these like emotional outbursts that that he feels like oh because I'm getting to this level where I'm so upset she needs to get to that for me to feel like she's in this and it's like you said super toxic um and so immature like I just need him to grow up v very draining um and once again it's like okay well if Katina does start exhibiting that type of behavior routinely that's definitely not setting y'all up to last because both people can't be on that same energy. Yeah, he he has to care for her more. Like, I, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied no. with how my girl <laughs> Katina is getting treated. Uh, I think she does deserve better. And um, she deserves someone who, every time he says something to her, she's trying to put it into practice. He also said the reason why he backed down off of the cooking thing was because his mom was like, cut that out. <laughs> his mom was like that that's ridiculous so um he, he, <laughs> he didn't grow up that way didn't I say that right no you know what's funny is Katina keeps on buying him food like she As bought she those should. tacos listen I'm like our queen <laughs> until he learns how to put things into practice yeah. you're gonna get these star store-bought tacos on a Tuesday Okay, exactly. So yeah, I, I love that. But yeah, he's he's definitely still in the phase of, oh, she has to prove something to me when you are not all that you think you are. People were making fun of the editing this episode, though, because like, mm -hmm. I guess he got that ne neck tattoo. And there were scenes oh. like going in and out where like on, in one scene, he wouldn't have the neck tattoo. And then the next scene, he would have the neck oh. tattoo or whatever. So, um, so yeah, that was interesting. Like when they made up, that was probably a few days later or something like that because he actually mm -hmm. had the neck tattoo at that point. So, huh. Oh yeah, I did notice the difference. Also when he said like, oh, I got my hair cut for her and how he gave up the other apps. Mm -hmm. I don't know, this is giving me Lindsay vibes where you're doing things oh, yeah. for people that maybe they suggested just in passing. I doubt Katina was highly pressuring him. She may have just mentioned it. Okay. She said she liked Michael B. Jordan and then he took it upon himself to get his hair cut. <laughs> and, and now you want to throw that back in her face about you're doing so much to make her happy. It's a haircut and hair grows back. <laughs> okay. It's not Stop. that easy. Not and then I'm, I'll just mention this quickly. It was when she was sitting down with the sister-in-law and she fell out of her chair. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> Girl, what was in that margarita? 
<laughs> that that was Anna. That's who Anna was, the sister-in-law. Yeah. I don't know why I put down her friend, but yes. But I like Anna. Bring her back. I um, yeah. I enjoyed their their conversation. Uh, oh no! I, I hope Katina says no and runs far away from this man. I do not like the previews that I'm seeing for next week because and I'm sure we'll talk about this then. But mm-hmm. he doesn't let anybody talk to him or um, correct him. Like there's something about uh, a man who can't take correction from even like the people who are there to help him that doesn't sit well with me. Like you have to be, um, I don't want to use the word submitted, but you do have to be like uh, calm enough to accept. I mean, I guess he listened to his coach, but uh, his coach wasn't even saying that much. Mm-hmm. That was like, he wasn't giving <laughs> that, that good of advice anyway, but like to disrespect Dr. Pepper, and he disrespected Dr. Viviana when she came too. It's like, these people know more than you. These people are trying to look out for your wife because you clearly aren't trying to look out for her. You're looking out for yourself and you mm-hmm. need to learn how to be a husband because what we're seeing so far is not it. So Yeah, and it's men and women. Like you can't go through life thinking you're above reproach. Like Exactly, like you, you can't. <laughs> and you're not gonna get... I don't know how far you're going to get successfully not being able to not far take correction advice because I hope it's you know but you know again and I do think like obviously marriage requires the requires the grace that she gives him I just again mm-hmm. want to see him give it back to her we love reciprocity but yes. you know it is what it is um mm-hmm. Mark and Lindsay <laughs> yep. let's get with these two <laughs> Lord, Mark and Lindsay. You know, um, you know what I kept thinking uh-huh. uh, during their scenes with those outfits, baby shark dude. <laughs> I, that, I think that scene annoyed me the most. Uh, so I am gonna go out of order. That scene annoyed me the most because I'm like, she stays doing these corny activities that nobody has asked for instead of just listening when this man says, hey, this is what I want, this is what I need. Like, he isn't asking for family photos and shark outfits. He's asking for basic respect. And, you know, keep, of course, Mark doesn't have his stuff completely together, mm-hmm. as we know, but he's just asking for, like, basic respect and for you to acknowledge, hey, these things that you do, I understand that's just what you do, and I understand you care for me, but these things are a no. Like if you can't tell the person who you're married to or who you're in a relationship with that, hey, you've done something that I would like you to not do again and they actually listen, you don't need to be in that relationship. Like even if your stuff isn't together, like (laughs) like you need to leave. I was saying that that shark scene really, really bothered me. It it was giving me, oh, I want to decorate the house, but the house is on fire. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you're trying to do these cutesy things that I think yeah. are good and they have their place mm-hmm. but it, it's more impactful when the foundation is intact yes or the house isn't on fire already yeah you get some cute little pillows and curtains <laughs> exactly okay so mm. the first scene with them was grocery shopping which <laughs> who taught okay. this girl how to grocery shop who I, I I couldn't go grocery shopping with her they set a budget right 150 and she walks in and she's literally picking everything up I hate that I'm very much a what I go in for I come out with like you know how people say oh you go to Target and you get uh, I'm not that person if I went into Target for lip gloss I'm going to that lip gloss aisle I'm getting the lip gloss paying for it and leaving so going grocery shopping with someone and they're picking corn that isn't (laughs) washed and eating it when we didn't even have corn on the list. Like, I <laughs> I was so annoyed. It's like, girl, what are y'all cooking for the week? And then the way she was asking him about like every other fruit and vegetable, I don't know if it was the editing, but if this man don't like eating fruits and vegetables, let him eat his goldfish. In fact, that may work better for his budget. <laughs> right especially especially now that he's not working I did I did put that down I said let that man eat what he wants to eat like you've been making fun of your girlfriend's husbands because they're chinger, chicken finger men and now you haven't like you shouldn't have been it might be happily husband. married chicken finger men exactly exactly <laughs> but also and then she's like oh you know I want a man who's like palate is refined and 
his this is that like because you eat fruits <laughs> like come on and <laughs> see but also but also I said Mark needs to eat some fruits and vegetables like come on you I mean you are an adult now <laughs> <laughs> he does, but there's a way to go about doing it. Yes. It's just very controlling yes. the way, you know, she's like, oh, well, you don't eat this. You don't eat that. And it's also her tone too. Yeah. You know, it's like, no oh, well, okay, this is a vegetable or fruit you never try. It's really good this way. Would you be interested in just taking a bite? Yeah. Can I and cook this leaving it? You? Yeah. Like leave it at that. Or if you find one fruit or vegetable that he really likes, just let him eat that. Yeah. He might like potatoes. I haven't seen him say anything bad about potatoes. So maybe give that to him. But uh, yeah, so grocery shopping was irritating. Um, the fact that they set a budget and she was just like, she just kind of threw it out. Uh, <laughs> I thought was very uh, interesting as well. Um, because okay. she, that was a representation, I feel like, of how she views the feedback that he gives and okay. his feelings. So but later on, she said, like, oh, you write stuff on the board and I go along with everything. I was like, you didn't even go along with the $150 grocery store budget. Like, what exactly are you going along with? Um, and then she gets on. I love when Lindsay does her, like, her <laughs> selfie. Because <laughs> she's just such a hot mess. She's like, I'm pretty much done with him. He's he's that is no man of mine that is no friend of mine I don't think he can ever come back he's done for me and I'm like Lizzie girl relax okay uh, but she said he's not giving her anything and then when they showed the can so the crew wasn't there but they have like the cameras in the house mm -hmm. and she's like you just ruined 250 dollars worth of clothes like why do you keep throwing money in this man's face like we understand you got it like you make more money than him you don't have to and he's like because I put them in the dryer so if there's one thing that like men around me dislike it's when they're trying to make some type of effort to do something nice and instead of like at the very least acknowledging that effort you're like you're doing a million things wrong that like that irritates anybody I think so yeah the fact that she did that rubbed me the wrong way so was it that he did the laundry wrong or he he did something with the laundry wrong it ruined her clothes so she was going to slap off yes and okay. and um so all I remember him, her saying was that's 250 dollars worth of clothes and he and you like something 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 he goes because I put them in the dryer <laughs> that yeah. was his response. um so yeah you know yeah I, I I don't know she yeah she doesn't know how to pick her battles wisely and she doesn't obviously. know how to pick her battles at all <laughs> oh, yeah at all but um definitely in the grand scheme of marriage mm -hmm. quote like material things not to say that you know you should just treat people stuff any type of way but it didn't seem malicious and I think in marriage Hopefully one day she'll learn that like intent and motive, that's where you always start. Okay, did this per person wake up and intentionally decide to hurt me? Or did they have a motive to say, oh, I'm going to ruin your outfits? Mm -hmm. If that wasn't the case, then it's like nine times out of 10, let it roll off and keep it moving. Yeah, you, okay. So they had this conversation about accountability. And mm -hmm. every time he tried to say, hey, here's what I think you did. Like, here's how I think you wronged me. She says he's not taking accountability because then she wants to list all the things that um, she has done and he hasn't done. So it's almost like, a, I don't even have a safe enough space to say, hey, um, can you not do this anymore? Because then here you go saying, oh, well, I do so many things right and you never, like, it's almost like she doesn't want to accept accountability mm -hmm. until he admits that he's nothing or right? like she just mm -hmm. she won't accept that there are just certain things that this man does not like so I think it's not a safe space for Mark to communicate at all um if I'm in any type of situation where I can't say hey you did me wrong and you give me a chance to express mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna work and I, I don't think they're compatible honestly because of that because of no because of her and her not accepting and she tries to rub on him and he's like stop not right now and then that she's like I'm done and then in the diary she goes um 
you know, so I'm trying to like touch him and just reassure him. He doesn't want, he doesn't want it. <laughs> like you can't make him want what he doesn't want. Like he's saying, I just want you to hear me and you're trying to touch him. Like, yeah, it's, it's too much. And he's walking on eggshells. Like oh yeah, it's not sustainable. And it's the eggshells. Plus she's very controlling. Yeah. Like you're going to be on eggshells, but I'm also going to tell you how you need to be walking on them too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what did you think about the photographer? <laughs> that was so awkward. <laughs> if I'm that photographer, I'm rescheduling because I can't be in an awkward space like that. Well, well, one, you know, her wanting to be begged to have this photo shoot when really Mark didn't do anything to her. She got caught up in her own feel. She got herself so worked up. Yeah. But then was still like, well, I'll stay if he really wants me to stay. Lindsay, may, I feel like she's being finicky, wishy-washy. It's like, it's almost like she knows she's doing the most. So she's going to give him an out. Like, okay, well, I'll stay if you want me to stay, even though I didn't show up my whole behind. <laughs> like, girl, pick pick a struggle, pick a side. Yeah. I know, just that whole scene was just weird. And then they're taking pictures um, if I were him, I would have just said, no, we'll just reschedule for another time. Once again, he was thinking about her and that she'll probably wake up the next day or two days from now and wish that she would have went along with it. So he's like, OK, I'm going to smile and grin, get through it, because I know in a few days she's going to wish she had these pictures. Yeah, he, he was about a really her. good sport. He was a really good sport, like even how he introduced that woman would not have known they had a fight unless Lindsay came in the way that she came in because Mark was just very professional. He's like, oh, these are the cats, they're here. My wife stepped out for a minute. Like he didn't even disclose everything that was going on. Uh, <laughs> here comes Lindsay with that big old coat and that silk dress. <laughs> and she's like, oh, you look nice. Yeah, it's just gonna be him. I'm not really feeling it right now. Like you did this, you better come out here and take these pictures. <laughs> was it when they were eating dinner? Um... She was also trying to force him to eat something when they were eating dinner, I think. Was it like the carrots or something like that? I don't know. She's always trying to force this man to eat something. Yeah, I wrote down, yeah, she was once again trying to force him to eat something. And I was just thinking, like, if you can't let this man have some space in terms of even just what he's putting in his body, it's overbearing. It is just what, even if you think it's coming from a good place. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, she needs she needs to learn. But I, I definitely think she and Olajuwon are one and the same. Uh, and I hope their partners get away from them. Uh, also, I hope Mark. So Mark and Steve have, have the conversation at the beach, which is hilarious to me. Um, maybe we'll talk about it more with Steve. But Steve's just mm. like, oh, if the, if the, <laughs> If the point is that she just wants you to be making money, then you don't necessarily, I'm um, like, Steve, whatever savings you got saved up, that is not Mark's story. Okay. So mm-hmm. you don't need whatever you got going on where you can afford the life that you're living. That is not Mark. So you need to watch what you're saying to this man. Um, y'all situations are not the same, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that that's all I have for them. Very awkward. And then the photographer, bless her heart. She's like, okay, are we feeling better now? And she just disappeared and then came <laughs> Oh man, yeah, I I don't also the cats <laughs> on the um kitchen island. I was just like, no, why are the cats all over everything? That's why I don't eat at people's houses when they have cats, because cats can get anywhere. So I can't don't. do it. And I have allergies, but even still can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so now we are on to Steve and Noi, who actually Ooh. gave us a lot this episode. Usually they're so boring, but um they gave us plenty mm. at the very beginning, and this was a theme throughout, but I don't like how like they kind of painted Steve as like lazy because he was taking a nap. And here comes Noel. Oh, I wish I had the luxury of, of sleeping in the day. And I think low-key, I think Noel wants the life that Steve lives. 
Oh, it's not low key. It's high key. <laughs> she, she, she showed her whole hand. She turned the volume whole all hand. the way up on this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she showed her whole hand. Now we're finally getting under the surface of, of this Steve's not working issue. And I wish <clears> she <throat> would just say that. I think, you know, like, oh, I, I envision my life being a stay at home person and I'm going to work every day and you're not. And I, I just want to be a stay at home person too. And then, you know, that's a different conversation of, okay, how do we make that happen? Uh, she said some interesting stuff on the after party too, but let's discuss the episode first. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we can go into that. But any notes that you had on them? Yeah, so <clears throat> yes, Noi is big salty. It came through in all the comments she was making. And um, I think, I don't know if, yeah, salty, I would even say a bit envious to a certain degree because I don't think it's just, because they don't have kids right now. Yeah. I just think it's really getting under her skin the fact that she is getting up, having to work every day, like she did before she was married. But now she's with someone who has a bit more of a leisure lifestyle because of their financial situation. And it, it's coming up in terms of like the domestic stuff and what she feels like she should, should or shouldn't have to do yes. because he's at home. But one of the things that I wrote down was that um, I'm not saying that Steve maybe shouldn't take on more of the housework things because he does have more time. And that would just be a nice thing to do for your wife, knowing that you have more time to do it. But I don't think that there should be this expectation that Noi has to do nothing. And, and now I think that's Steve, her expectation. <laughs> yeah, now Steve is her maid and cleanup person when before Noi didn't you live an independent life and you were cooking and cleaning on your own? Yeah. Right. And then even with him, he said that he's pursuing a creative or passion project. And so there, that will take time and bandwidth as well. So yeah. it's not like he's just sitting back watching soap operas all day. And even still, um, you know, with him being at home and her working, I think, there's this perception that she is maybe uncomfortable with mm -hmm. of like, how is this going to look mm -hmm. to everyone else that I'm the one that still has to work and he gets to stay home. But he did say that he's contributing financially. Three like, times you know, as much. Yeah, three times as much. So that also says that it may not be about the intricate details about the actual money. Sis is salty that she's having to get up, walk over to her at-home desk, clock <laughs> in, work. He's laid up with sushi, doing some housework stuff, but it is a different lifestyle. But obviously, whatever he's done before he got with her has like set him up to have that situation. Yeah. And this man is 38. You know what I'm saying? So at least from what I see, he's willing to do the housework. It's just now it's becoming she's entitled. A where she's like, <laughs> yeah, it's becoming a thing where she's like. Because even if this were the other way around, right, and a woman is um, the one who's like, you know, staying at home, has a more flexible lifestyle, the man is still expected to do things like, okay, oh, yeah. you wash the dishes, or you absolutely are going to take out the trash, maybe you walk the dog, but he's like doing all of the dog things like, and you know, they had the, the, the cute scene, <laughs> that the cute scene where they went to that place where they paid to be the ones washing the dog. <laughs> Which I don't, I don't, if I'm paying money, mm -hmm. somebody else about to do all this, but whatever. Um, but yeah, like he's really invested in her and her life and her dog. And so I don't think it's fair for her to, and she's doing it to be petty. Like, I think you should do everything, you know? And I, I understand where Noy is coming from because I hate working on other people's time as well. But here's where Noy has to grow up. You have to use your words. You just have to, like, I think at 33 years old, um, you have to be able to, as an adult, say to another adult, hey, these are the things that I find problematic uh, mm -hmm. and let that adult who cares for you so clearly, right? Let him be the one to say, okay, these are the things that I will change. Cause it doesn't seem like Steve is the type of person. And I think they mentioned this on the after party who would be like, oh yeah, let's lose our house. Let's lose our cars mm -hmm. just because I want to have a relaxed life. No, like he seems like a responsible man. Um, and it's almost as if it's, it's kind of given me 
Elijah Wan and Katina vibes where it's like all of a sudden now because I'm married I have an in-home personal chef yeah. All of a sudden, now that I'm married, Miss Noy, she thinks that she doesn't have to do any housework anymore. And as a woman, you know, she says she wants to have three children. That dynamic still doesn't, especially when your kids are young, doesn't necessarily work out that way to where, okay, because you're home with the kids and maybe he is working, does that mean that you would expect him to do nothing with the kids, nothing yeah. with the house? ask anyone who has small children and their husband works outside of the home like it's still a team effort when it comes to things at home it's unrealistic that it's all gonna be split down the middle 50 50 all one way or the other like you still have responsibilities as an adult when you're off the clock from work yeah and like they keep bringing up that he's tried to have certain conversations with her that she's not trying to hear uh and I wonder I, why. I, I, I still want to know what that's about because so like when he was talking to Mark on the beach <laughs> he was like you know I feel like I've done everything short of getting a full-time job and on the after party it was revealed that he's not unemployed he's yeah. self-employed um so he not only has savings but he's bringing in like money still because it's not about the money it's it's not it's the setup it's the situation the optics she feels some type of way that he has a more flexible um lifestyle (laughs) yeah yeah. and she she doesn't have that and I think she's thinking further down the road like okay well what does this mean what if I I want that life at one point what are we going to do then exactly but she should just I think communicate that to him like this is what my expectations are yeah and I will say though that if it's really going to bother her that like maybe she will have to continue to work mm-hmm. throughout the duration of their marriage outside of the home. Yeah. Um, and she doesn't like go to him to say, hey, this is what I want. I just don't want her to be throwing jabs at him, envious of him and pressuring him mm-hmm. to change his whole lifestyle when if he has the money to do it, let him do it. Yeah, um, it, it was kind of funny, though, when he said, if I'm going to get a job, then what's the plan? I was like, uh. <laughs> it just sounded funny to me. Like, if I'm going to get a job, then what's the plan? The plan is you're working, but um, well, a full time job. But I think you're right, because even with the bathroom situation, she goes, the bathrooms didn't get cleaned. OK, you know how a broom works, you know how you know how <laughs> to spray the cleaner and clean the shower. Like, you know, <laughs> how, how did you clean- live before, Noy? right when the bathrooms were clean before what did you do say I didn't I didn't like that she was doing that and then we see the uh, again the crew isn't there and they have the cameras where she's talking about how she wants to stay married after decision day but then does not want to move in physically with him she wants to keep her place and have him keep his so what do you think about that it's absolutely crazy. It's insane. And it's it's um giving confusion. Yes. Um, on one hand, you know, she spoke about her past where she said, Okay, I did have this situation with the guy. Once again, people are fearful because of things that have happened to them in the past. Yes. But I guess it didn't work out. She had to start all over. She, I guess she doesn't want to be taken advantage of financially, which is confusing to me if Steve has kind of laid things out for her to show like hey I'm good there still seems to maybe be some fear there of her being taken advantage of but um it also was giving me I want to have my cake and eat it too where Mm -hmm. I want to like be in this marriage but and I'll say yes because I want more time to figure that out I don't want to completely chop it off and throw it away but I don't want to fully commit by getting a place together and doing this and that um, because I still have some doubts if I could be okay with, you know, you, your whole work setup situation. Yeah. And I think with her being so flaky, so obviously we've been all about Steve should just show her the um, financial statements, but also if he's saying stuff like I bring in three times more than she does to Mark, I think that might be something that she's probably already heard just from the scene of Steve. But um, yeah, so I, 
I've been very, very much like, oh, Steve needs to show the financial statements. But if she's showing that she's flaky in that way, like mm -hmm. that she's uncertain about this, then I personally would not show her my financial statements um, mm -hmm. at all. So I think it's like a cycle with them where he wants her to feel assured and he's done everything but show her the financial statements because maybe he's just not ready yet. Whereas she needs to see the financial statement um, to have that reassurance that he's been trying to give her with everything but showing the financial statement. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think um, that's interesting. And then her flakiness, but then her also writing these cryptic messages on social media. So, so I'm just thinking, okay, Noi, is it only this financial piece? Yes. Or is there something else that's pushing you to put these cryptic messages in. Poor Steve, he's like, you know, I, you know, it might be about me. I'm pretty right. sure it's about me. <laughs> Bruh, it's about the, you. The fact, no, he's so sweet because the fact that he gives her the benefit of the doubt and asks her every time, is it about me? Like, mm -hmm. Better he's than really me. trying to approach <laughs> things the proper way instead of just assuming. So I think that is a sign of maturity, but we all know like when somebody says, the moment you start to wonder if you deserve better, you do. And they're in a, like, who else is that about? <laughs> and, and I don't know, for me, that is a huge red flag because Humongous. girl, you can't even keep your thoughts and lips closed and you're in an experiment that's gonna be on national television what is going to be happening? What Say y'all stay together past decision day. You got your aunties, you got Sriracha, your cousins, everybody all up in the business because you're posting this stuff on social media, which I did catch on to the fact that she was like, oh, I tell Sriracha everything. And I'm like, no, don't. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the, the thing with the social media thing that really, really bothers me is that he has already told her I don't like this like he and he said it calmly enough that he's like I don't want like my people follow you I don't want that and the thing about Noi is she she talks wants to everybody to. but him yeah like, she wants the attention <laughs> you right you're going on social media and saying this when the man is literally right here with you taking care of sushi and you can go to him and say hey this is what I think I deserve this is what I expect and again she just has to grow up somebody on um twitter called her uh annoying <laughs> and i was like not them giving her a jasmina name <laughs> i mean but it fits at this point and like you said a few episodes ago she's giving a young 33 like obviously age isn't going to be an exact representation of maturity but when she does things like this and then she's offering up like oh, we can not live together, but still be married. Okay, Alyssa 2.0. <laughs> you know, there was a, a man last season who said the exact same thing to his partner. So he wanted them both to say no on decision day and then just get to know each other. And what is up with that. people recreating the, the rules? And and that's the thing with Noy and C. So they've been like intimate. They Their lives are, you know combined to a sense so I, I don't really understand for her the the reason behind that you know what I think it is I think she's trying to use the housework stuff and the living together after marriage at, as leverage to force his hand to get a full-time job mm -hmm. and to be out working I really do think it's it's she's using it as a way to say okay well you know, if you want my help doing housework, then you should be working outside of the home. If you want this marriage to move forward, you know, you're going to have to go get a full-time job. I, that's what I'm feeling. I'm, I don't know, but I, it just feels like leverage to try to force his hand to go in the direction that she wants it to go. You know, what's interesting. So on the, on the after party, they said, um, like Keisha was like, oh, well, he's, you know, cooking, he's cleaning, taking care of the dog, all this stuff, you know, all that for you um, or for, for you guys. And she's like, well, I'm working for us too. And that's why I was like, mm, I don't think so because I don't, I don't think Steve needs your money. So I, I think you're working for you, but not for y'all. Like he doesn't need, he doesn't need you to do that, but you definitely need sushi to be taken care of, right? Like you definitely need to eat dinner and all this stuff. Um, 
And did, nice. did, didn't she say uh, that, like, they asked her, like, well, what would be an amount saved up? Okay, so I, I've been holding that, but yeah, okay. talk about it. <laughs> yeah, so they asked her, okay, like, what would be an amount that you would be comfortable with, like, if he had saved up? Yeah. And she says, in Boston now, $40,000. I was like, are we... I was so confused. I was are, like, are you living in the middle of nowhere in Iowa? <laughs> because I don't even know Steve and what he has in the bank, but I I I am, I, I feel a thousand percent confident that it's more than forty thousand dollars. <laughs> like is in Boston, it's gonna have to be, I mean, forty thousand and that and so when she when she said that, I she was doesn't even know how many work. <laughs> I'm like, girl, um, this this can't be about the money. It's it can't not, be not not for not for forty. Did, did you mean to add an extra zero like okay. 400? <laughs> 40? <laughs> in Boston. I was like, that oh, won't even God. last a year. No, no. It might depending on no. and the way that I mean, because we saw his apartment. I don't even think that would last like six months almost like that. That's no. just not enough. And no, so I'm like, yeah, she doesn't even understand. Like, if that's all you need to feel comfortable, girl, kick up your kick up, kick off your shoes and relax your feet or whatever. Escape said like that. You can't you can't be serious. Forty thousand dollars. And that's where it goes back. I'm like, this this is a young thirty three because yeah. um, and she works in human resources. So I was just like, <laughs> I don't understand. So like the amount plus the fact that he is bringing in money and he's self-employed not unemployed um using his like creative whatever he's doing um he probably does some consulting on the side you know like I just it just felt like she just like made up like came up with that number like I don't know if a good number to come up with like I'm like okay at at the minimum and this isn't even enough but like at the minimum 100k like if she would have said that I would have been like okay that's low but maybe (laughs) yeah and that that's like oh maybe six months and then like my business needs to be fully up and going and or I'm back to an office it seems like he has businesses yeah, because he always the, the, the amount though I think doesn't even yeah. matter because it's not even it can't it can't be about the money. It's she, it's the situation. She said it's mostly about like the motivate. Like why isn't he motivated to go out and get? And I, in my opinion, he is motivated to go out and get, just not in the traditional the way. Sense. Yeah, and so like <laughs> to to start up and maintain businesses. Um, I think that's more go getter than oh well, okay. I'm not gonna compare, but it's it's still go getter in my opinion. And I'll say just from my experience, him being a sales engineer, um, his runway in terms of income versus hers is more. Mm. So I'm not surprised that even in consulting, he's bringing he's contributing three times as much. Um, yeah, as she is, and that's not like a dig against her but that should give her a little bit more comfort in that okay if he's in tech he's a sales engineer he could probably get a job really quick and his runway is longer you know ceilings higher yeah so when he is working even though he may have taken a pause Mm -hmm. if he goes back full-time if needed it may just be double triple your monthly income yeah anyway It doesn't seem like there will be a gap in his resume because he's doing other consulting. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it could be that he is working just like when he's filming, he's not, you know, like, because they're, they're not filming 24 seven. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that amount was very interesting. Um, but she also admitted, which we're about to get to, but she admitted that when she was talking to Sriracha, that she was being one-sided and just venting. So I'm like, okay, I'm glad she admitted that because when Sriracha said, he told you he loved you after a month and she didn't say, well, I told you yeah. three days. I'm like, <laughs> you but really just to go see it. 
Right. You're really trying to paint this man in a bad light because she said, well, you know, in married at in this experiment, that's like two years. No, say say the truth, Nora. Say you said it after three days. (laughs) And that's what doesn't make sense with me about makes sense to me about her. Yeah. Is that you were like all in, I'm in love, it's this, it's that. Y'all have been intimate for you to then turn around and say, oh, we should have separate places. Yeah. If I were Steve, based off of her posting the social media stuff, not wanting, acting like she doesn't want to move in, trying to force his hand oh. to maybe have a lifestyle that he's not interested in. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Those would be real red flags for me. Oh, I mean, they, they definitely are. They definitely are. Also, uh, I, I think she has to be very careful how much and she she doesn't know this clearly because she's putting stuff on social media but I think she does have to be selective about what and how she might share with Sriracha because it seems like Hmm. Sriracha's the type to be like girl just leave him that Mm -hmm. whole conversation I felt like the people who like Michael's sister and even like Jasmine's mom or the people who they've had on this season so far talking to them I think have given really good advice this is the first time where I felt like you are not saying to Noi what she needs to hear. And you're saying what she wants to hear. You're agreeing with her, but you're not saying the things that she needs to hear. And I think it could also be, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think the other people have either been married or are married or just in a different place in life. Mm-hmm. I don't know if her sister is older than her or younger than her. It could just be based off of her own life experience and where she is in life. Yeah. That's kind of driving the the um, advice that she's giving her. So she may feel like, oh, I'm giving my sister the best advice, mm. but that's based off of her own experiences and what, you know, yeah. she's been through. So yeah, she, she has to know, and this is where like with Noah, I don't know if she has the maturity to do this, but she definitely has to know like what advice to like sift out because she's like, I think, I think. So I just showed up for her 15 minutes of fame, honey. He's like, I think Steve needs to get a job for him, not for my sister. Okay, relax. Steve, Steve is secure. Yeah. Okay. Like, you know, you just, but I think all they're hearing is what Noi is giving back, you know, giving them. So yeah, yeah. It, it's it's interesting. I really hope that she doesn't um, I don't want to say she doesn't block her blessing, but mm. kind of just because he is such a kind um man who's like putting in the effort and putting himself out there he's very like logical and I I really I really like Steve uh and so I don't want her to mess this up being immature or failing to communicate and I just want Steve to have enough money saved up in his consulting business yes. to be doing what he need to do so I don't have to eat my words. Exactly. <laughs> you better not shame. Listen, Steve. Steve, don't do it. Us- <laughs> you got a lot of us on your team. Don't you dare disappoint us, all right? We need that extra zero. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But um, yeah, hopefully they'll, they'll be good. And again, this is a, um, an almost 40-year-old man. Mm-hmm. you know uh is responsible or seems responsible um so yeah hopefully they're working out but i'm looking forward to next week because i love dr pepper every time she comes on the show she like tells it like it is so i'm hoping mm-hmm. that she does this again um we know that she probably told it like it was with Olajuwon, and that's why he was in his feelings mm-hmm. but it's like i i i don't like a man who can't take correction like that to me is a red flag and i i'm hating that I know everybody needs to like grow, um, but of course we're not Katina, so we don't have to have the patience with him that she does. And so that's why I am where I am. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, um, we'll see you guys next week for episode 13. 13. <laughs> uh, if you haven't, please, please, please go ahead and subscribe. And while you're here, check out some of our other podcast videos. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.